Hi and welcome to this tutorial on CFF init. This tutorial includes information on creating your first citation.cff file. You can use the YouTube chapters below to jump to specific parts of the tutorial. If you want to update your existing CFF file, check the description for a separate tutorial. The first thing to do is to go to the CFF init website. Click the link in the description or you can go to your browser and enter citation-file-format.github.io slash cff-initializer-javascript You should see the same page as me now. I'm currently using version 2.2.0. Click on Create to start. The CFF init application consists of a form and a preview of the citation CFF file. On the left, you can see your progress. In the middle, the fields that you will need to fill. And on the preview, you can see the generated file. On smaller screens or screen with a large zoom, the CFF preview may be hidden. Uh, you can still access the CFF preview by pressing the Open CFF Preview button. You can also see two red errors on screen. Don't worry, they are only pointing out that we don't have a minimally valid file. This first screen contains the most basic information about your work. Select whether it is a dataset or a software here. I will assume that we will use a software. Next, you have to add a title to your software. You can see that the error below the title field is gone. Also, the next button becomes available when there are no more errors in the screen. The message here can be personalized, but if you leave it blank, it will use a default message up here. If you use this software, please cite it using the metadata from this file. Now that everything is fixed and the way that we want it, we can press next to go to the next screen. At the authors page, you can add the authors of your software. Click add author to start editing the first one. The author's name is separated in four parts, which can be confusing. Some cultures don't have name particles and name suffixes or consider them part of the given or family names. Use whatever feels more appropriate to your case. For example, we can have Johannes Diederik van der Faust. This is our first author. You can click Done. Another author, Charles James Stewart. There's no need to fill the name particle and name suffix if it doesn't exist. You can add João. Cabral de Mello, Net. These are situations from different cultures and languages that have or not name particles and name suffixes. Normally, you will always have a given name and a family name. If you made a mistake or want to edit, you can always click the edit button or the remove, and you can always add more authors later. You can also change the order in which they appear. For our case, I'm going to remove all of these and I'm going to add a single author myself. Still in the same author, we can add an email. So my email. You can see that while I'm typing it, it thinks that my email is wrong because it's always validating the input. So if I forget to add the dot .nl, it's going to say that the email format is invalid. But when I finish typing, it understands that this is a correct email. Next, I can add the affiliation. And finally, I can add an ORCID. You can usually copy paste the ORCID from some place. But if you are writing it down, you can just add the 16 digits identifier. Now you can click and done and add as many authors as necessary. At this point, you have the minimal requirements for a citation.cff file. That is, it is valid according to the definitions of CFF version 1.2.0. Since it is valid, the GitHub API and the Zenodo integrations will pick it up correctly. You can click to download the citation.cff file here, but I won't do that now. You probably will want to add more information to your citation.cff so your software is properly cited. Notice that all of the following fields will be optional, so you can always skip what you don't have or don't want to fill. Now, in this screen, we can add persistent identifiers to our CFF file. We click Add Identifier. In this first line, we can select which kind of identifier we have. 
and then we add the value below. Finally, we can add a description to this identifier. For instance, let me fill this with a fake Zenodo deposition number. And I can add a description saying Zenodo deposition. This is done. I can also add other identifiers. It doesn't have to be only one. So for a JORS paper, for instance. I can also add other kinds of identifiers, such as a new URL. So I can say that I have a GitHub for my software and releases tag 110. And I can say this is release 110 of my software. You can add other kinds of identifiers as well. For instance, a software heritage identifier or something else. I entirely like an archive identifier. For more information on any of these things, you can always click the I button and it's going to give you some more information, sometimes uh, an example and always a link to the documentation. So if you look at the I button for the general screen, you can see examples for everything and a documentation for identifiers. If things are not clear, you can always add an issue to the citation file format GitHub or to the CFF init uh, GitHub here on this reporting issue. Now that this is done, I remove this, click next. The related resources screen only has four fields and they are all URLs. The first URL is the code repository. That is, where is the code available online? For instance, you can add the GitHub link. The second URL is a website for the software if it exists. Next, other repositories might exist with information of the software. If you click here in the eye, you can see an example, a ASCL. ASCL stores metadata and links to the software for a specific community. So your community might have something like that as well. Otherwise, you can always leave it blank. The artifact repository is where you will store a package or binary version of your software. For instance, the PyPy repository or the R Crun or Maven or something else entirely. In the abstract screen, you can simply add an abstract description, summary, etc. of your software. The keyword screen is also easy. You can just click here and fill it up. And you can add as many keywords as you want. Click next. In the license screen, search for the license of your software in this field. This will look to the SPDX short name list for the name of your license. If you don't know the name of your license, you can always write the full name and SPDX on your search engine. You can see here, for instance, the Apache 2 license or the GNU public license, the GPL. It shows all the matches according to the things that you wrote down. For this example, let's just choose the Apache 2. Finally, we get to the information that are specific to this version of the software. You can add the commit hash, version number, and release date of your software. Remember that this information is stored when you create a Zenodo deposition, for instance, so you normally want to update this before creating a GitHub release. Depending on the language that your software is written, you normally already have to update the version in a few places, for instance, a configuration or project file or the readme. So while you're updating that, you can update your citation.cff as well. So for instance, here you can add one, two, zero, and the release date has to follow the year, month, day. And then you have the version and date release now stored. Lastly, we reach the extra CFF fields screen. This screen is advanced, so remember that you can always skip it. In this field, we can add anything else that is not covered in other screens, but is supported by the CFF schema. You have LIAS guidance here and the error messages that will appear in the validation are not formatted. The common uses for this screen are to add a preferred citation or a references field to your citation.cff. So if you want to add any of these fields to your file, you're going to have to add them manually. There is a current limitation, unfortunately, but we might add that in the future. As a quick example to show you how it works, I'm going to add here a preferred citation, and you're going to notice that a lot of errors will appear on screen. 
as I said, because we don't do a specific validation of what's going on, the parser doesn't really understand until we finish the preferred citation name. Now it actually knows that we are writing a preferred citation and the error is just that it must be an object. As I said, the error messages are not clear because they are not being parsed. To continue adding, I'm gonna give an enter, two spaces, and I can start adding the information inside the preferred citation. For instance, the authors. The authors of the preferred citation are enter one, two, three, four spaces, a dash space, and then I can write the given names. Again, is myself. One, two, three, four, five, six, the family names, which are Claudia Siqueira. I can then give two spaces and write the type of preferred citation, like an article, two spaces, the title, in this case will be my paper. Notice that after I have finished, it will validate my citation CFF, and it will say that it's working. If you did something wrong, like an extra space, the message is bad indentation. If you forget or if you write wrongly a given name, to a given name, it's going to give something much more complicated, but related to the authors. So you have to be aware that the messages that appear here might be false negatives. You have to finish writing what you think is correct and then validate them. Moving on. That's it. We now have a valid citation.cff. Download it clicking the large download button, or you can copy paste it clicking this copy to clipboard button. Please keep the comments in the beginning so we have some recognition of the work that we did, but also so we can see some usage analytics. Remember to add your citation.cff to your repository root. It is now part of your software package. I hope this tutorial was useful. Please let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe to the eScience Center YouTube, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.